All right, so number one thing you have to know about the test tomorrow is vertex, general, and factored form. That's, those are the big forms of a quadratic. All right, so let's talk about that. So this there's, I had this, y equals x squared. Interesting. Is that, that's a quadratic, isn't it? Is it in vertex form? Is it in general form? Is it in factored form? All right. So this one's kind of in all of the forms. Let me just show you with zeros. If I put this in vertex form, it would look like this. Do you get what the vertex is? Zero, zero. All right. How about if I put it in factored form? X plus zero squared plus zero means the same as X plus zero squared, right? And doesn't that mean the same as X plus zero and X plus zero? You get that? That's factored form. Okay. And then what's general form? General form is generally you just take that and multiply it all out, which goes back to this one. That's general form. So it's in all the forms. All right, but it's more complicated when they're not. All right, so let's add in a piece of graph paper here and say, okay, I'm going to give you two dots here, and I'll make it nice. I'll make that one there. Can you tell me what that one's equation would be? If this is at 1 and this is at 5, would you please write it on your iPad and then be prepared to hold that up for me so I can see it? You should be in remarks right now. That's a good question. The form that's going to come easiest is factored form. So why don't you write it in factored form? Write me an equation for this parabola that would go through these. And a couple of good questions you might ask is, is it flipped? No, it's a normal parabola. And is it stretched? No, it's a normal parabola. Okay. When you got it, show me. He's got it. Good. 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 Too small, can't see it. Good. Good. Good, good, good. Can't see the other number, but it's probably right. Good, 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 good. And dang, I thought somebody was going to forget the y equals. All right. Good, good, good. Too small, too dark, can't see. All right, that's all right. So y equals x minus 1 and x minus 5. All right. Then... What's general form? Well, just multiply it out. Go ahead and do that. Multiply that out. Let's see. It's x squared and outside and inside. So you have minus 6x and then you got plus 5. Raise your hand if you had that one right. Okay, good. Then, what if I had stretched it? Where would that go? Yeah, let's say I stretched it. I gave, told you the stretch factor of 2. I'd put 2 there. All right. I did not, but let's say I did. All right. So now how about the vertex form? That looks like this. It's got a parentheses with a squared, and then the vertex would go here and here. But what is the vertex? That's the hardest kind. So how do you do the vertex? You find the middle of these two, and you make a dotted line there. And do you remember that part? Figure it out, please, and write me the answer in vertex form. How could you be done that fast? Okay, next check. Do you agree that the dotted line is at x equals 3? Do you remember then that the dot that's down here somewhere is going to have 3 comma something? And then it's obviously negative because it's going down. Negative something. So I put the 3 in, and I stick it in here and here, and I have 3 minus 1 is 2, and 3 minus 5 is negative. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Raise your hand if you knew that. Good. Then how do you do vertex form? you got to have a 3, and you got to have a minus 4, and then is this a plus or a minus right there? It's a minus because it's the opposite of what this is because it's counterintuitive on the inside. All right. Next kind. What if I said that I knew the roots of an equation are... 2 and negative 7. It's a weird looking thing. 2 and negative 7. Then I knew the stretch factor was 5. Write me an equation. In any form you want, but there's one only one logical, easy form to write it. The roots are 2 and negative 7. If 
you've insisted on following them roots, I'm going to have to have you move to a different teacher's class. I'm just kidding. Some people say roots, some people say roots. All right, so. Ah, there you go. You caught yourself at least. I didn't have to bust you. Good, good. Yep. 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 Tilt. Flare. Okay, good. Thank you. Yep. Mm hmm. Excellent. Oh, yeah. Mm hmm. Ausgezeichnet. Sehr gut. Yeah. Do. All right. So you should have said y equals because it's an equation, and the next part is a stretch factor of five, and then you have x, and then the two would make it a minus two, and then seven would make it a it's a negative seven, so use a plus seven. All right. Yes, sir. How can you find the vertex? Good. If at this point you needed the vertex of this thing, you would have to graph it and figure it out from there, which would be tough. Okay, we're not going to give you any of that tough. All right. So if I if we had the stretch factor out of here, then it, then it'd be easy. From here, you could just say, okay, if there's no stretch factor, then you could just say, all right, it's, it's at two and negative seven. Here's two and here's negative seven. And you can figure where the dotted line is and you do that whole thing, like we just did last time. Yeah, the stretch part would be a, a mess your mind up. Yes. Yes, you could figure it out with, well, without graphing it, but it takes something called completing the square, and that is the thing I'm teaching you on Thursday or Friday. I haven't figured out which day we're going to do the ACT thing. We're going to do the ACT thing Thursday or the ACT thing Friday, but either way, I'm going to have a video prepared that's last year's video of how to do completing the square okay and that's exactly what you're asking about is how could i get something from like this to get that into factor form i just factor it like this but how do you get it to vertex form and the completing the square thing is about that and uh, it takes a while to teach so i can't just tell you right now all right so let's go back to what we have to know for the quiz tomorrow would you now turn your attention to the actual worksheet? So take your iPad out and open up the worksheet. It is the only worksheet that has the word review in it. I know there's a few other things that say they're assigned today, like the rest of that other worksheet, and I'm not assigning that today. You can do the rest of that worksheet on factoring if you want to, if you feel like you need the practice, okay? Because some kids do need the practice on factoring and other kids don't. So if you're one of the kids that's been getting like a B, B minus, and you know, been just kind of doing okay and you want to do better, yeah, that other worksheet would be a great idea. But all I need you to do is the review one. So here's the review one. Once you wait a second, please. Let me get this on my screen correctly first, and then I can answer your question. There, I gotta slide it up so you can see the top of the worksheet. It looks like that. 7.2 review worksheet number two, and I want you to do all the problems. It says something about not doing all the problems, but that's wrong because the quiz is tomorrow, and so this is the assignment, which is to do all of the review worksheets. Yes, ma'am. This is in the 85% category. It's not really a test. It's a quiz. The, re the difference between a test and a quiz is it's over less stuff. All this is over is this vertex general form, all these forms of a quadratic. Big test on quadratics doesn't happen until like right before Thanksgiving. Okay, so we got a lot of time before that, learning other stuff. So this is the quiz. It's in the 85% category. Yes, it matters, but it's not that many points. That's all. Usually quizzes are around 15 to 20. Okay, and usually tests are around 30 to 40 points. Okay. All right, so your quiz tomorrow is on this stuff. This top box here is not stuff that is a question it's just a reminder that's what general form is this is what vertex form is here's what factored form is note where the r and the r would be roots and they're also the x-intercepts they're also known as the zeros and the actual questions start down here at number one so let me get that cleared and then drag down to number one 
right there. Okay, so we got to graph it. And then here's the important part, convert it to the other two forms. So if all you're doing is graphing right now, you're missing half the points. Graph it starts at negative, oh wait, positive four and zero are my two roots, see? Positive four would be for that one, zero would be for that. And then if I actually figure out like where the vertex would be, I have to do that whole thing with the dotted line and say, okay, the dotted line's at x equals two. And so then I put a 2 in here and here. And I get negative 2 times 2, which would be negative 4. So my vertex is right there at 2, which I knew right away. And then once I plug the 2 in, I got negative 4. That's the other. Get it, that works? Okay. Going over one, up one. Over one, up one. Now, that is the equation already. It's already written in factor form. But do I have to convert the equation into the other two forms? Yes. So the general form, you just multiply it out. Just a second, I'm gonna finish the graph picture. It's, that's good enough. It goes through five points and I kind of draw a line through. You don't even have to draw the line in this unit because the iPads get kind of messy. So then generally just multiply this out to get general form. So then the plus zero, that doesn't really do anything, does it? It's just like that. So I'm going to multiply this out. x times the x is x squared. x times the four, negative 4x. Four I need to squeeze a y equals in front of that. y equals x squared minus 4x. There's my general form. My vertex form, you always start like this. Parentheses, x, and a squared. And you drop in the vertex here and here. And the vertex is at 2, negative 4. But what sign goes on the 2? Negative all right, so there's all three forms of the equation. They gave me factored, and then I got general and vertex form. On problem number two, they give me vertex form. That makes it way easier to graph. Because I don't have to go through that whole dotted line thing and figure out where the vertex is. I know where the vertex is. It's at negative one, negative six, so it's right there. And it's a normal parabola, so it goes over one and up one, and over two and up four, over two to and up four, and then uh, what's the other forms? We'll just generally multiply this out to get general form. And the last one is factored form. Once it's multiplied out, hopefully you'll be able to find factors. Uh-oh, did I do something wrong? Ah, uh, boo. I think you're right. That vertex is, and I should have done this in the first place, right what the vertex is. The vertex, you don't have to, but it's a good idea. Is at negative 6 comma negative 1. There we go. Negative 6, negative 1. Tried to go too fast. Sorry. Thanks for catching me. Okay, so there's my parabola. Something like that. And then I have to multiply this out to get general form. And then once I've got it all multiplied out, then I can factor it if, I, if it factors. And I think it does factor because it's going to have answers of that and that are my roots. So writing factored form for this, could you either factor out the general form one? Or you could just take these and say, oh, I know it's at negative 5 and negative 7, so it's got to be x plus 5 and x plus 7. There's factor form. But you could have factored the general form, and I would have gave you that too. Okay, enough on that. I think I'm just going to give you the rest of the time to work on that. And that's all we got for the video for today.